Now, the Speakmans have tackled everything from OCD, eating disorders and even a fear of fire engines. Now they're taking their unique form of therapy on tour to help the nation fight their phobias and live a happier life. Here's a reminder of some of their many success stories. It was like a wave hit me um, and it was like I had an, absolutely no idea what was going on. I had to call an ambulance because I couldn't breathe. I was like, there's, I, I thought I was like closing up. On the face of it, Connor had everything. But deep down, he was suffering with general anxiety disorder and depression. You kind of got this internal battle going on, and that's why you feel as bad as you do. It's good to just, like, hear it, you know what I mean? I think I was about six. All went to the beach. My brother dug a big hole in the sand, and I ran and went <laughs> down the hole and disappeared. And the water was over my head. Who should you have been frightened of? Both of them. That's right. I'm not the water. Ah, you're getting through to me now. And then we discovered that as a baby, he'd had pneumonia and nearly died and was in an oxygen tent. Now, the moment that we helped Bruce to realise that the oxygen tent saved his life, the phobia was gone. What you've got to consider, 35 years of a belief. But I promise you, when that settles down, you will be able to walk on sand, no problem. Please welcome Nick and Eva Speakman. You got the power. I mean, every single time I see you on this morning, and it's some incredible phobia that has crippled some poor person for years and years, and I think, how can they possibly try and fix that within the time it is on the telly? And you do it. You oh, do it every time. You. Honestly, we've got the best, it's the best job, job in, the world. in the world. Really? Honestly. Yeah, it's brilliant to be able to do what we do. Do people think that it's not real? Oh, yes, all the time. Uh. Yeah, lots of people. We helped a lady on yesterday's show who was 70 years of age, and uh, she actually said, before you turned up on my doorstep, I actually didn't believe that it was at all possible um, and that it was sort of some sort of trickery or, or magic of the TV. Um, but, yes, yeah, so we got her over it. But, yes, it's a, it's a common thought. Yeah. Does every single phobia kind of all boil down to the same sort of thing, which is anxiety of some form? Well, actually, the anxiety stem... The anxiety is the symptom because of the phobia. And, and our therapy, we, you know, it doesn't matter what phobia it is, we use the same approach, uh, you know, and we take the view that you're not born with a phobia, no one's born with a phobia, so there's an event that happened in your life that causes that, and then when the phobia is created, then when you, you live in your life, you get anxiety because of being triggered by whatever the phobia is. Cos it's like, um, they say, don't they, loud noises. You're born, you're with, born with that Correct. one. Like yeah. noises yeah. and falling. But when, you don't, when you're fear, fear of the dark, it's something you're taught as um, a child yeah. to, be a, to be scared of yeah, the dark. Yeah, absolutely right. And, and on some level, all our behaviours, no matter what they are, uh, negative behaviours, they are learned through some form of life experience and there's always usually a positive intent behind it, so it might be protection or familiarity or copying. So, yeah, positive intent with everything. What's the weirdest one? Oh, well, I've ever had to deal with. Oh, the, do you know what? The, the, there's so many. I think that one of the weirdest ones is being fearful of gravity. There was a lady who, uh, uh, yeah, who lived in. <laughs> well, we're all scared yeah. of that. <laughs> <laughs> but when I tell you that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, the, the, well, how, how, how did that manifest itself? Well, well I mean, this, this lady actually uh, lived in the countryside and had to move to central London just in case gravity disappeared and so she, she had to could, hold on to yeah, something. So she could because, grab a building on her way up. You know, I mean, it, yeah, yeah, really? I mean it, it does sound ridiculous, but people, you know, but the lady's really suffering with that. Yeah, yeah. How bizarre. Yeah. And how long did it take you? Because you, you've had, like, you've, you cured someone once in seven minutes or something. That was a record, actually. Uh, that was, uh, no, that, that was... That was uh, was, a lady um, who had a fear of freezers. Yeah, freeze, yeah. yeah. See, that was really unusual. I guess that sounds ridiculous, but, yeah. you know, it's... Uh, you know, when you're suffering with the phobia, it, it, it can be all-consuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally Well, now, you were on a mission to, to make yes, the nation a happier type yeah. of a place, really. Yeah. And yeah. there's an evening with the Speakmans. This is up in Birmingham on the 16th of May. Yes, it is. So what, what does that entail, exactly? What, what are you going to try to do? Well, do you know what? There's, we're looking at, we look at two areas to make your life better. The first area is looking at any issues that you've got, anything that's holding you back, any traumas that you've had, and, and that's, like, the first part of the show. And then the second part is creating more happiness in your life. You see, because the human brain is not designed to make us happy. It's designed for... The main thing is survival, which is why people end up with phobias and fears, because of the protection mechanism that that's we have. That's interesting, yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 so no-one's no ever told you that, actually, to be happy, you need to practise happiness. Yeah, there's certain things. So, and... 
So go on. I wonder if you can help me out. I mean, the, the Lucy Moon audience know very well I'm the messiest person in the entire world because we're always showing photographs really? of my room. And it, it, though we joke about it, it, is something that really gets to me because I can clear up... See, that room, wow. I cleared that up like, like a, a week, order. just under a week before. So I can clear up a room and then within 36, 48 hours, it can be a total tip again. And, and, I, and people are really saying when they say, why don't you just put your stuff away? But I okay. literally can't do right. it. Right, well, you, again, going back to positive intent, there's got to be some positive intent behind that behaviour. And, again, this is something that we're yeah. going to be teaching at the evening show, is why do we do things? Why do we have negative yeah. behaviour? So you've got to have some sort of a positive intent. Now, that might be familiarity, because maybe you grew up in that kind of environment. It can be rebellion, so because... For example, if your mum or your parent was stipulating that you have to be clean, you have to be tidy, yeah. that now you want to be creative and be your own person. Yeah. So it can be that. However, um, again, one of the things that we will be promoting and sharing about in the evening show about, um, is about environment. And generally, um, a cluttered environment does mean that there's a cluttered mind behind oh, it. For sure. Oh, well, <laughs> <still there. laughs> we know that. Yeah. Is there any, is there any How do I could one it? day be uncluttered? Yeah. Can she unclutter you know her brain? Everybody That's can be uncluttered and, um, again, Hope. <laughs> but a great thing that you can do, um, and again, this is something that we'll be, we'll be sharing, is um, a timeline. Because if you look, if you actually write a timeline of your life of negative events and things that have happened in your life, knowing that thoughts create feelings, yeah. then if you have better thoughts, you will have better feelings. So that's really important. However, there is a bright side to this. There's some massive geniuses out there that were incredibly messy, such as Albert Einstein, <laughs> Mark Twain, Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs. <laughs> so they're all messy. <laughs> yeah, they were really messy as well. So perhaps it's just that you're incredibly creative. Oh, yeah. well, maybe that's what it you is. Might, you might need more than seven minutes to try to fix this. <laughs> I have to say. You might have to. Are you a project, Nadia? Yeah, I'd yeah. love to be a project. Because it, it's got to the point now where it just makes life really difficult. Because really? I can never be organised. Yeah. Well, yeah. look, you yeah. amaze me, the two of you. You know yeah. that. Like you, you say, you. you're up in Birmingham as part of this morning yeah, live which as well, yeah. which is all going to kick off as well. Fun. Great to see you both. Thank uh, you, you so much too. again. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. Nick and Eva Speakman, ladies and gentlemen.